Welcome friends, welcome to Enlighten, where we talk about creative consecration through Christ. We study the scriptures through art. We're going to be talking about this piece today, For to Hear Him. And we're also going to talk about this piece, Freedom Song. So I am so, so excited. This is going to be so much fun because there's just incredible, amazing things we want to be talking about. And so this is why this is going to be amazing. Okay, I'm gonna grab my sweet friend here. Anna, she is absolutely amazing. And I hope um, all goes well with the technology. There it is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello, my friend. How are you? <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful morning where I'm at. Is it so pretty where you're at? Yes. I was thinking it's spring. We can actually greet each other with happy spring. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> we've, we've survived well. We haven't really in Boston. It's no. still cold here. but It's going to be a trick in Utah too. It's fine. We'll just take the day for what it is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh my gosh. It's so amazing. I... Um, just wanted to tell people real quick before we dive in about the tippins. Oh, yes, they're here. So. Yay! yay. <laughs> Yours are in the mail, by the way. <laughs> I said so. I sent you three because I didn't know like if everyone's using like paper scriptures. Uh -oh. Like I sent some for the girls. If you want more, uh, like if they're are they all in paper they, scriptures or are all they all in paper scriptures? Okay, I'm gonna send they, more. They, they're like, like me. Support. No, I don't know. <laughs> You're too generous. We're I so love, excited. They are amazing. I love, love that they're doing paper scriptures. That's that's just the best. That's so awesome. <laughs> so I I am so thrilled. This is really incredibly awesome. And there's um there's like so many of them. I think like over forty yeah. or like yeah. forty five. Yeah. That's incredible your collection, Eva. It is so inspiring. It's they're so beautiful and there's so much to read in each picture. I was explaining to my girls again that I'm getting on and I get to share this and just looking at your art, it inspires so many different emotions and there's so many symbols in all of it. So it's, it's such a treasure. So thank you for sharing your talents with all of us. Oh, you, you, you I tell you, it's, it's Heavenly Father. I'm sure you feel <laughs> the same way Yeah, with your work, you know, you're like, he's telling you to do this or change that or work on this you know so i think this is um totally totally it's we're doing his work each in our own ways yeah, which is own so beautiful yes. Yes. yes you're inspiring so thank you <laughs> thank you you are such a bright light um and i i am just so grateful i know you i i'm just like seriously <laughs> so grateful <laughs> I, feel the and I was watching one of your um on your instagram um motherline nutrition i was watching one of the clips there and i loved it so much it was the one where you're uh just getting out of the pool like it's a swimming one <laughs> but it was like so cool because it said like don't just wait for the perfect moment just do it and things yeah. are gonna come around yeah. and things are gonna happen yeah. which i thought it was so amazing it really oh. like touched me so much because well, you're so nice i it, think sometimes we wait for the right time to feel the motivation or the strength, but sometimes it's the action that creates the motivation, right? Yes. You got to take a step in any department, not just health, but in any area of our life. Exactly. So. I, no, I had like this section of my house I wanted to clean. I'm like, okay, you just totally motivated me. I'm just going <laughs> to do it. It was this like cubby that really needed a tender level. I'm like, those darn junk drawers or those darn cubbies where you're exactly. like, exactly. Oh, got to tackle that. Yes. I'm like, like, okay, thank you, Tana. You inspired me to go and tackle that. So um, you are so sweet. Well, tell tell everyone um, a little bit about you. I know people have seen you here before, but just please share oh, what you do in your light. How do you oh. share your light? <laughs> well, I am, I am, I just love, Eva and I actually have this in common too. We just love good food and whole food from the earth. And so I own a business. I'm the founder of Live Right Nutrition, but I have a business partner, Katherine Johnson, and we own Motherline. And together we just want to bring organic, organic elements from the earth to people in food and beauty products and nutrition and just the right, real, whole, 
goodness and light that already exists on the earth. And so I just love to share, I share a tip a week on my Instagram account, like you were mentioning, and just ways to find more clarity and more truth when it comes to food and how to take care of our bodies. I love today, Eva, that you were like, let's talk about cleansing this inner vessel and talk about the temple. And, and really there's so much symbolism in this concept of caring and cleansing internally and externally. I think one of my biggest, um, I don't know, I think the thing that I get inspired the most about is just how closely our bodies and our spirits are really related. And that when you take, that you can't separate them. When you care for your spirit, it helps your body. And when you help care for your body, it helps your spirit. And so that is truly my greatest passion. And I would do anything in the world to share it with anyone that wants to hear anything. <laughs> I, I love that. And I love how, you know, it says that it's like your mind, heart, body, strength, like you want to love God with all of our senses with yes, like our heart and our body and strength. I, I, I agree completely. It really um, helps us. It, they work together. It really works. It's one whole. So it's, it's so amazing. I, as we were talking about this um, for to hear him, this piece and um, yeah, and I will also put your, I will tag that video, I'll tag your um, account on my story oh. so people can come and see what you do. So they can be inspired oh, too, which I think is so kind. <laughs> but I will, I will definitely do that. And um, I was just thinking how um, amazing it is and how like the word of God can inspire us to make changes. Yeah. And listening, you know, to Jesus and listening to him in a temple. And so I actually, I have a neighbor and his name is Josiah. And wow. so I great. just, yeah, what a great name. And I, I met him, <laughs> I was just like, it's a new neighbor, I'm like, hi. Um, he's like, my name's Josiah. I'm like, oh, wow, that's a great name. It, it was a king, I knew a good king, yeah. you know, in the Old Testament. So I did a dive, kind of dig, dive, deep dive into Josiah and I have to share some things which I thought were so beautiful with what Jesus does and exactly what we're talking about. So we're going to jump real quick um, into Josiah, you guys, because why not? Why not? <laughs> Josiah, he was only like eight years old when he became the king of Judah. So super, super young. And when he was about the age of 18, and one of his high priests, Hilkai, he finds the word of God inside God's temple, wow. which is so amazing. He finds the law of Moses wow. in the temple. And the minute like Josiah starts reading this, so we're in 2 Kings 22 and 23. And those are the two chapters that talk about that. But it's so amazing because the minute he starts reading um, the the word of God, he realizes, um, you know, in verse 19, it says that he had a tender heart. I thought that was so cute. Thy heart was tender and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord. And just those few things help um, because he realizes how wicked and how awful his whole kingdom is. They have really gone away from God. So he's inspired by these words of like the law of Moses that he just found and this covenant and those commandments and he changes everything. Wow. He literally rebuilds the temple of God. He, um, in verse three, it says that um, he made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord. This is Second uh, Kings 22 verse three. Um, and his statues and all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and yeah. all the people stood to the covenant. And I was like, are you serious? This is incredible. And it goes a little bit farther in 23, 25 is what touches me so much. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all of his heart with all of his soul, with all of his might, according to all the law oh. of Moses, neither after him arose any like him. Now I want to be Josiah. I know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, I, I mean, and, and we are in a sense, because this is why I thought this was so neat, that he is like clearing away all the things that 
stopped you know god's people from following god wow. and he is introducing the true law the god of israel that is going to govern them and and that the whole cleansing of repentance you know we yeah. are cleansed internally through repentance and and restoring and the whole idea of the renewal of the covenant that he brings it's just so so amazing that he actually does it. he rules for like 31 years but the change that he brings because he brings god into our lives is just so incredible to me that he clears the old away and brings the new the renews the covenant of god you know that i just am thinking as you're saying this i love it that it, it i love the process of reading this and how he went to the temple and found it and then i love like i kind of was just reading a little bit as i was listening to you, but how you know he heard the lord and then i love that he says i will gather like once he felt it himself he couldn't help but just go and i that's exactly how it is for us once we feel and we kind of start to clean that inward vessel like one of the titles of the talks we talk about and you start to gain again more momentum and you feel this desire he couldn't help but serve and then change his whole kingdom that's incredible yes. it's incredible and you're right they did he did gather and he kept sharing he kept telling them about how great god is and yeah obviously keeping all the commandments you know and because of that like faith led obedience i just love that I do too. because he read the word of god yeah i mean how and it probably became almost in the beginning it was probably more of a sacrifice and he had to really get the covenant and stand before the people but i can imagine that with the reign of that kind of righteousness for that long it probably just became who he was it probably just became naturally this is his countenance and it no longer became maybe a sacrifice it just was who he yeah. became, how he ro ruled as king and how he shared, yeah. which is so cool to think about. Could we be like that too, you know? Absolutely. And he was like the grandson of Hezekiah and he knew King David. So he had this, yeah. you know, he Absolutely. wanted to be like, he's like, remember that, wait, this is what my people did. You know, yeah. I want to do that too. I want to bring Israel. Yeah. It was like after Joshua that um they israelites just forgot all about god so for centuries they were without god and just how by reading the word right like you can bring him in and it made me think so much of the moment when jesus comes at the triumphal entry right he comes yes. as a royal like king we know that right and and what does he do the very next thing he cleanses the temple i had that same thought eva i was like when does it happen in the timeline as we're preparing for Easter and really putting our hearts into that space of, of understanding the power of the resurrection and Easter? I was not even surprised, like looking at the timeline, that was the first thing you have to do, cleanse and just start fresh and just kind of get a new space, whether it's mentally or physically or whatever we're gonna look towards, whatever we're needing. I love that's the first thing that happened was this cleansing of the temple and, and coming in and just clearing it out. So there's more space for the light, the light that just illuminates off of him. I just, I love that timeline. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's interesting because like, he's so um, determined to take his rightful authority. And I think it's interesting to think that because those people, the money changers, right. They were um, one of the translations I looked it up. It said that they were, um usurpers yeah that's kind of a big word for me but usurpers <laughs> <laughs> usurpers <laughs> of god's power and and he was like no it's me you know it's my this is my house this is where i dwell it made me think what maybe are some things in our own homes that are trying to usurp that power of god they're yeah. trying to rob us right yeah. because they're trying to take away what could be there like instead you know and I, I i love you sent over some beautiful scriptures in luke and i just started to read all the different accounts right of this and there was one of the accounts in matthew also that i had just read and i loved this idea because in matthew he goes and says the same thing like he cleaned you know he he wanted to clean the temple he wanted to get rid of this den of thieves right yeah. But yes. I love that in Matthew 21, verse 14, what happens right after he cleanses the temple? It says, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. And I don't know that that could have happened had the temple been cleansed first, right? So as I think about this in our homes and 
personal application, I think we all have areas where we need some healing from the Lord, right? It's going to be different, but that's the purpose of life is to find where we can insert him and find where we can be healed and improved. And I just love this idea to think, Okay. Okay. Sorry. I, I lost you for a second. Okay. Sorry. I know. I, I, I saw that. I was like, oh, I think I'm getting called. Let me pause that. <laughs> no, I was just rambling on about who knows what, but just talking about how I just love this idea that the lame and the blind couldn't be healed without having the temple cleansed first. And so how does that apply to us in our homes in our days? Because again, no one's perfect. Everyone has some kind of area that they probably want to work on or where Christ wants to enter in. And so as we look for that and, and seek for him to come in and heal, what a great example to know that, well, first we maybe should start cleansing. First, we should start seeking for kind of that, that clearing out. And what a great time Easter is to think about that, to think like, Gosh, like as we were just talking, I know today we're getting fooled in Boston and in Utah, but the sun's out. I, I even drove, I was up at the Draper Temple last Thursday and all the little yellow daffodils were oh. bursting through the snow. Oh. And there was like three inches of snow right on top of the soil and then these little tiny buds and sprouts. And I think what a beautiful concept of the seasons and restoration and renewal and refreshing. And we're so lucky to have it seasonally right as we live on earth their seasons but i love the concept too of having it happen for us on a regular basis it can happen daily we know it happens weekly when we take the sacrament right so how can we take that very literally and realize that it's not a culmination of one big great event but that it's the little thing step by step you know that happens i mean i i know we're talking about two different talks today and i have like these are such incredible talks this could be all day just going over this. But <laughs> one of the ones in um, The Daily Restoration by Elder Uchtdorf, he says in there, most of the changes in our spiritual lives, both positive and negative, happen gradually. So I think, you know, and it says just one step at a time. And I just like this, this, this idea to realize that for us, if something feels daunting and we want to more light, like looking at this picture, that light that's there, I think we're all naturally drawn towards it. I, I look at that. I mean, like the light that emits off of his face. And it's something that we all have this inner desire to have, even if we don't realize it. And so I think that it's okay to, you know, take a step back and be like, gosh, it's not going to all come at once. It will mean so much more to us and have more value and more validity and more lasting effect if we're okay to take it step by step, day by day, and really just add it little by little into, into our lives and realize there is an order and a process to all of this. And this makes me think so much. I love that. That's like brilliant. And the I just listened to this devotion Elder Holland gave to the youth and he was talking about like persistence. Oh. He said maybe persistence is our favorite word. Yeah. That, that we don't give yeah. up. That we just yes. keep trying. We fall down. We get knocked down. We get up. Like persistence. He's like, we. this is where our gift can be at. Just being persistent. Yes. Um, to be doing this. Like I love what you said. Superpower, don't you think? To be persistent, to be consistent. It almost feels like it's too, it's too simple. Cause I think with the Lord, I think one of the things that I've learned, especially in working with clients and nutrition and how to bring more light into your body. That's really what it's about when it, mm -hmm. when it, for me with nutrition and for us, when we try to eat like good whole foods, it's not necessarily about fitting this role or this model or this stereotypical image. It really is about bringing more light into our physical bodies. And we're all going to make mistakes and we all want to eat the sugar and we all want to, you know, have the snacks that, you know, like yeah. it's just, it's not about perfection. It's about persistency and consistency. Like, I think, you know, one of my, one of my favorite concepts that I love to try to help uh, people understand is that when there's consistency or as Elder Holland says, persistence, there be, there comes an unforced rhythm of grace into our life. Mm. Like that's where the light can just kind of fall on us with dew, like, like, like a, like a dew, you know, like, and it just kind of starts to build and starts to happen, but it's not in the perfection. It's not in not making mistakes. It's in the consistency 
of just looking for the light, looking for one new way to cleanse today, looking for one new way to serve, one new way to add a little bit better, um, a little bit more like just a better way to see things in our life. And I just think that takes a lot of pressure off, right? Like, because of course we want to all strive for, you know, to be better. And, but that persistency, I love that you brought that up because and I'm sure Elder Holland is, you know, pounding the pulpit with his beautiful way of telling stories. And everyone's like, yes, we will be persistent because it is, it's a superpower that we don't all realize we have at our fingertips. Yeah, he was like, don't be so hard on yourselves. Just be persistent. Just keep trying, keep working towards. And how how blessed we are that we actually know what we're working towards. Oh, don't you think so that? that to have like, a goal and to have a vision like of where we want to be. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's so in um one of the talks I thought it was so sweet how um Elder Ezra Taft Benson, he was actually the prophet when I first joined a oh. church. So like your short time, yeah. I had, a, I don't know what, I'm like ancient, I feel like I, it was so many years ago, but I love him, <laughs> I love him so much, and it was so, I just love when he's saying, and quoting Jacob, the Book of Mormon, which he talked so much about, like, make a habit of reading it every day, your life will be blessed, so that was so cute, but I thought this goes so well with what you're saying, um, this quote from Jacob, I thought it was so beautiful, and um, he said, you shall clear away the bad according as the good shall grow until the good shall overcome the bad. And yes, it, what a concept of that. I like, circled that exact yes. same thing again. We did it again because I thought that's really what it's about. It's, it's just little by little. I love that you quoted that too, because I literally thought, gosh, as we replace these bad habits with good we become better, we become more full of light. And I love that it's like, I think of when I hear the word clear out, I don't, I don't, I just kind of think of like, just a little bit, like kind of just dusting it off, clear it out a little bit. It's not like a sweep through, right? It's just like, just kind of clear it out of the way and the good shall grow. I love that until the good shall overcome the bad. And that really is the goal, right? Yeah. Little by little, just to carry more light. Yes. Be more clean. Yeah. Yes. It's so, and, and then he's like telling us a little bit after that, how do we do this? He's like, well, are you reading? Are you taking advantage of your scriptures? Are mm -hmm. you going to the house of the Lord more fre frequently? Um, taking advantage of increased time with our families, which yeah. is even more increased now that church is two hours. And <laughs> then, you know, just like all these amazing things. He's like, wow, they're, they're again, they're so um, so simple. And then he talks about being awakened, which I think it's so, such a beautiful word to be awake. I do. Um, don't you just I, love that? You know, what's so funny is I actually spoke in church this Sunday in sacrament meeting and my, my thoughts kind of were, were coming from the living Christ just because it's Easter and we were studying about that. And when I saw that word awaken too, I, that was also another word for me that I was like, gosh, cause I had just read a statistic that most Americans live in only 40% awareness. We're not quite fully awake to the things that are happening. We kind of just pass through life, like grocery stores, restaurants, like folding laundry or whatever it is at like work, maybe emails, right? Things like that. And that statistic made me, it like, it kind of just shook me for a minute. I'm like, wait, I, I could be missing out on 60% of, of the present of, of life, of the things that I know that are here to teach me how to be closer to God. And so when I saw that too, that awaken, that word, that concept, when he talked about that, I, I instantly thought about what is it that keeps us awake? And, and truthfully, like, I feel sometimes that it's not always our fault why we kind of tend to, you know, like, okay, why am I so tired? Sometimes I want to be present. And so I know we, we mentioned maybe if there was time, we could talk a little bit about just some ways to kind of keep our body pure and clean. And I'm sure a handful of us struggle with a little bit of energy, right? And like, there's just certain things we can do to help us like stay awake and alert and clean and purify. And, and it was inspired because in that same talk, um, cleaning, cleansing the inner vessel, just before, right after he talks about, you know, what we need to do to read the Book of Mormon, he says, he says right in there, um, but there's another reason why we should read it. This is talking about the Book of Mormon. He's quoting President Romney. By doing so, we fill and refresh our minds with the constant flow 
that water with Jesus said would be in us as a well of springing up unto everlasting life. And I was like, oh, and I just think again, I, I think of, of the of the way our bodies are created and the way the world and the earth was created and i think that it's not a coincidence again that what on day two was when the waters were created or separated right he created the waters in the firmament and separated those from the waters on the land and i love that because to me that emphasizes this importance of the living water but also the critical you know a poor importance of water for our physical body so i thought gosh maybe it would be fun for people to know like one tip if you feel like sometimes in the day you do feel like you want to be more aware and more awakened to what's going on around us the one of the greatest tips is just to start your morning off with a big glass of water like it sounds so basic eva but squeeze a little fresh lemon in there and you get a burst of vitamin c you get a great lemon cleanse and it is there is something physical that creates a spiritual awaken and something spiritually can awaken us to be like, oh, I wanna do something physically. And I just, I don't know, I just thought like, maybe that's one little thing that if that's where we're at in our life and we wanna add one more thing to be more awake, to be more in tune with how can I cleanse, right? How can I cleanse my temple? How can I look for more light? How can I little by little, what's one new thing I can do is so maybe get up in the morning and just try adding a big glass of water. Our bodies want to kind of eliminate and detox, you know, how, again, cleansing. And then so we can add more healing and the beauty of water right there to just, we can have this physical water that also is a, is a springing up for us, right? This awakening up for us. So I don't know. I just thought that might be something fun to share that yes. we, we could try right like it's it's i've it's i've loved it i've done it for years years and years and it does it just brings this great cleansing to my body and to my system and i'm like if anyone's not doing it try it today see how you feel yes it might add a little bit more vitality to your spirit yes i love that and in fact you look i have that like totally <laughs> underlined that same part <laughs> i know i'm like yes yes i love you i think it's so cute and i'm so glad you said that i've been actually doing this since Emily, Emily had you an inklings years oh. ago, like maybe a year, I don't know how long, but I've been doing that. Oh, you inspired it's me. It's amazing. It, it really is. I was just in Arizona and some of my friends actually had a fresh lemons oh. in their yard. Hello. Really? So yeah. we grinded it up. Like, like I love so to grind awesome. up with the rind, the whole thing. Yeah. And just Put it like, all on. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. So <laughs> like, yummy. <laughs> well, and don't you love that, like, the thing that helps add light and clarity to our body also comes from the beautiful earth and is grown by light. In fact, that reminds me, sometimes I share this scripture with people just while we're on talking about light and cleanse. And it's right, this, so the section, think how, this is no coincidence. We have the Doctrine and Covenants, section 89, that teaches the word of wisdom. The section right before that is actually one of my most favorite of all. And I know it's not going to talk, but I just thought this was a fun fact when you brought up the lemon. Yes. Because in Doctrine and Covenants section 88, verse 7, it's it, this whole trip, the whole verse is, the whole section is incredible. But step by step, it's talking about light and truth and how, you know, Christ is the light. But I love that in verse 7, it says, this is the light of Christ, as also he is in the sun and the light of the sun and the power thereof which was made by and i just think oh my gosh the sun is christ and christ as the sun grows the food and the fruits that actually bring us more light so why wouldn't we just want to put more light into our bodies in the most literal sense like grabbing that lemon dropping in the blender adding i'm sure some water or whatever else you added to it or you know i mean i freeze ground up lemons and ginger and put them in tea sometimes and i think how beautiful that that's what the Lord gave us. The food that's the best for us is grown by him, by his light on the earth that we can actually put in our bodies. So if that's not a wonderful reminder to eat more fruits and vegetables, I don't, I don't know how else you can put it. I was like, this is amazing. It's so awesome. We have, I love, love that. And I love that scripture is heavily underlined in my scriptures because it's, yeah. we, it is so right on beautiful. And I love how you, you, apply that to our lives like immediately that like it's so true we have we have this cute couple in our ward um we sit they kind of sit right behind us and they are beekeepers oh. and we i buy their bee every single year 
oh. and liquid gold. Yes. They, this is what <laughs> they say. You're eating sunshine in the oh. winter. Well, this is it's what... li very literal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and, wow. I, that just made me think of, of the lemon. Okay, and I have to tell you this because I was talking to my son last night. Who's oh, at BYU. Yes. And um, this, and I told him we're gonna talk um, about our favorite things to talk about: Jesus and good food and <laughs> easy <laughs> life <laughs> and water and all these amazing things, you know. And so he's like, "Mom, you're not gonna believe this. I lost my power beads." And then he went looking. So he was in the library somewhere, so yeah. he couldn't. He's left them somewhere, so he went back, but he couldn't find them. And some other girl was sitting where he was. And so he was kind of bummed and he was almost like leaving. And then he went back and talked to her and said, have you seen, he didn't want to interrupt yeah. her because she was studying. Like, have you seen my power beads? <laughs> and then she's yeah. like, like um, there's nothing here, but I did see some on the sundial right outside of the library. There's a sundial. And oh. I saw like some power beads right there. So he, thankfully she had known this. He would have never. Yeah thought to go to find his power beats at the sundial right, right. So he goes at the sundial and i'm gonna put this in my story because i he sent me the pictures this is what it said on the sundial and tana oh. you're gonna love this okay can't wait <laughs> so he goes and grabs his power beats is like mom i like stood there and i just pondered every word that was on top of that sundial so on top of the, and i love this because our prophet was talking about a poem with a sundial oh. a few conferences ago oh i remember yeah yes i love that poem and and he's like mom it was so cool and he's like sitting in the very top of the sundial it says this i record only the hours of sunshine i thought that was so amazing i love that and i'm gonna, then, I'm gonna cry I, <laughs> keep no, going keep going it's so I, good i, just I thought that was like i record it's like written in this really bold beautiful letters in gold letters it says i record only the hours of sunshine and on the side of the sundial it says i get my light from god that was also like engraven into the stone oh, of that sundial <laughs> it was meant to be that he lost him how sweet that someone found him and thought well i'll put him here so maybe whoever's looking for him will see them the wow sundial. what a gift you know in, in the big picture what a gift oh it was like so sweet the fact that we you said exactly that that you want the light to come from god and that yeah. was so um so amazing to me and how the atonement can make the good times and the bad times all filled with light yeah. because of jesus you know he can transform he can. all of that yeah. and it, it's just so so incredible it made me think a little bit when i first had Ian, who was our oldest, yeah. and then it was so painful. I had so I have such hard births. Like I don't just some women just have a baby and they're out the yeah. door. You know, yeah. I'm like Not twenty-eight me. hours, oh, seventeen hours. That is a <laughs> I don't know. Love. So wow. He was a he was a long, long time baby, and then after that, I'm like, you know what? I I don't know if I have another child. I'm just like, this is too much, too way too much work. But then I forgot, I literally yeah. have forgotten how painful it was. I'm like, no, it's great, it you know? <laughs> sure, we'll have it, one more, why not? They give you that baby <laughs> with your hands, you're like, oh, it's worth oh, it, you know? It but is. And that's one thing, what you just said, it's one thing, I love that it's worth it. Because, I mean, he talks about even Elder, uh, or I mean, President, um, President Benson also talks about, like, you know, it's going to be practice. He says it, he called, I mean, he's talking about reading the Book of Mormon, you know, when he says, um, a few minutes each day is a lifelong practice. And I think it's good to remember to practice, but the, it's all worth it. Like, because then he goes on to talk about how your respect and consideration will become, it will increase. Your love for each other will grow. The spirit of contention will depart. Righteousness will increase. And so all those hard things become worth it. Like, we would do anything to obtain that. You would do anything to get your son, right? And to have him in your life. So of course it's worth it. So if it feels like maybe sometimes doing the cleanse, right? Or changing your schedule to fit in some of these more cleansing habits and things like that might seem too daunting. I love that you just said, it's worth it. We just have to remember that it's worth it. All the effort and anything we have to do, it's worth it. And doesn't he give us such a good example of how to do that? Elder Uchtdorf. I thought that was so cool. If you want to change your, you know, that no. quote. 
Yeah, that is powerful when he says that. He says, your whole life has the same shape as a single day. And then don't you love? I'll read this. Yes, please. Do you want to change the shape of your life? Change the shape of your day. Do you want to change your day? Change this hour. Change what you think, feel, and do at this very moment. A small rudder can steer a large ship. Small bricks become magnificent mansions. Small seeds can become towering sequoias. Minutes and hours well spent are the building blocks of life well lived. They can inspire goodness, lift us from captivity of imperfections, and lead us upward to the redemptive path of forgiveness and sanctification. <laughs> that is such a powerful concept. It really is that it really matters that the idea that's an ongoing daily infusion of heavenly light. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. so good. Beautiful. And uh, have you heard that story too? That like it, it's we drift away little by little, and then like the train tracks, like, but if you just move the train just a little, yeah, it ends you up. You go totally, totally far. Yes, I have. I love that concept. I and he oh, talks about it here like with the airplane right he yeah. says it's the same thing and and i love that there's a way of coming back that like um if we have gone the other way i love how he's like don't worry all you have to do is an ongoing process one day yeah. come right back you know come just come right into the lord and um he will like bless your uh, life and efforts and and make time for it i just read this well not just actually i read this book a while ago when it came out that i love so much but i was just talking to a friend about it um the atomic habits oh i love that yeah, yeah. Incredible. so good oh. and I, I just made me think so much like um how we can attach like a new habit to something we already are doing to make it yes. part of our lives you know exactly. yes. so if what would be maybe one habit that you would think would be like so beneficial that you've seen like work in bringing more of Christ into like our lives that we can attach to something we maybe are already doing uh, that that could make like bring more light and benefits, you know, to whether it's our bodies or what, what I mean, you can share a few. I, yeah. I you, oh, can, you know, Thank I'd love you. to. Yeah. That's a really powerful question. Like it's powerful to think about like on an introspective level and it's power to think about, you know, how, what it would look like for everybody else too, because how, I wouldn't you want to hear that from everybody because I think everybody will be drawn to towards different things. I think the first thing that I think about if I wanted to bring rip, the more light into my life, one of the things that, I mean, I talked about that awareness and, and, you know, just really, Am I present in what's going on? For me, I, there's another book I'm just reading right now and it's called How to Know People. It's by David Brooks. You will love, you would love this. You would love it so much. Yeah. I'd love to talk about it. Yeah, I'll text you the picture too and you can, we can yes. post them. Uh, but he talks about how do, when we're with someone or in a day, because most of us have interactions. Sometimes they're with people we know and sometimes they're with total strangers, but we all have interactions at some point in our day or our week for sure. And he said, have you ever looked at someone and just really try to be and know and and think how they must be thinking and for me i just love that concept because i do feel like i have more light in my life when i seek to love someone for their strengths it's really easy to see weaknesses in everybody right like it's easy to be like oh my gosh she drove me crazy with this comment and then she can you believe she said that or what in the world is she thinking and you it's fine it's easy to find ways to disagree really easy to find ways people are different from you but what a gift and a blessing to find things that you have in common or to see strengths in others i know i get to work with clients one-on-one -on -one all the time i have a beautiful business partner that we talk about things all the time and whenever we try to talk about or see someone or or have a relationship or a connection, I think that that person brings more light into my life when I really truly try to see them the way Christ does. And that for me is probably my favorite thing about humans, about people. Yes, like just to be like, what is their light? And what can I learn from that? And maybe there's something to learn like what not to do, right? Or Sometimes it's not always like the best things. I know that we have toxic relationships sometimes, but I think that every time I meet someone or talk to someone, I can walk away closer to Christ because of that person, 
whether it draws me back and I'm repenting or forgiving or learning or sharing, or I, I'm picking up on more light. And I think for me, that's, I don't know if I explained that very well, but I just know that that's one of my favorite ways to increase my light is to find it in others. It's a similitude when we do that with other people, I think it's a similitude of the way Christ does it with us for heavenly father, right? Like I feel like those relationships can be patterns to take us from right in front of us on the earth to heaven and to our divine celestial potential. And that's how Christ sees us. So why shouldn't we see other people that way too? Like, let's forget about the flaws. Let's find the best about them and present that. Mm -hmm. And that for me is one of my greatest, like, I have to remind myself to do it often. You know what I mean? Yes. It's not like it comes natural. It's not like, yes. you know, yes. sometimes you'll find that or a person that you're working with and you're just like, I, okay, I'm going to find out what, what light this person can bring into my life. So that would probably be one of us spiritual concepts. And I think, you know, just to answer when you said maybe something physically, I think there's so much, it's so interesting interesting because as I look at the world around us and the way we are trying to fuel and feed our bodies and bring in light, I think it's so interesting to think how, you know, there's secret combinations in the world that try to tear us down and deceive us. Well, I've actually come to see, and this might be off, to off topic, but I just thought I, it might be interesting for some people to just be aware of that there sometimes can be secret combinations in the food industry. And sometimes people are just more after your money, right? Mm -hmm. And so like, and even the good things that might be around us, like, and, and you live this way, but like, if there's anything that we can do to increase our physical capacity to hold light and strength and cleanliness, I would always just encourage people to like, what's one maybe processed or packaged food you could pull out of your day and replace it with something whole, right? The same way that the Christ would want us to live spiritually. Like what's something artificial or, you know, mm -hmm that we could pull out of our lives and replace mm -hmm. it with something special. Just how we talked about food from the earth is grown by light. There is an incredible amount of not only light and cleanliness, but the diversity and the strength that it actually brings to the way our gut functions and our microbiome and the way we think and clear. Like all mental illness really ties, well, most of it ties back down into how what, what we're mm -hmm. eating and how well we're feeding the body and that you can correct so many things and they see and feel more light rather than feel weighed down by chronic fatigue or chronic illness just by a quick switch of real foods with that are grown by light so i know they're kind of two different things but those are just the first things that pop into my head and like i said what a great question but Gosh, it would be fun to hear everyone's and yours tell me yours i, I think it's so beautiful that because those two are so connected again i i love when we're connecting the spiritual and the physical that yeah. the they're all like one because the it really my mom would always say um uh, food can heal you or kill you so true. you know and she was so big about cook you know just cooking in general and just like food and um just, oh. just that beauty that it can really bring soothe your soul and your heart and and then um in bulgaria we say that um i don't even know how to translate it exactly but it's like the men's love is through his stomach or something like that I oh yeah <laughs> we have a fastest way to someone's heart is through their stomach yeah we are something like that okay. we have something okay. similar. i mean my mom was born in the philippines so i don't know all those 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 american phrases either but i know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah and i always was like wow it's so true like you just and yeah. we gather right we've been talking about like gathering like food is like such a it's an yeah. inseparable part of our well-being of what we do and um I have to apologize. I somehow the comments are all locked up, so I'm not seeing oh, them on cool. my side. Oh yeah, I can't see any either. Yeah, but I see lots of hearts. <laughs> I have no idea. It's saying something on my side that's um, anyway. That's so weird. Something is somehow they're not showing. Oh. So if someone is trying to type yeah. or say something, uh, we go can't back respond and it later. Even I would love to hear your thoughts. It's, it it's locked up. Yeah, I have this little thing that shows like locked up on my screen. I don't know oh. what's going on. It's really odd, but. Um, yeah, comment after yeah. on the live because you, usually we share what everybody else yeah. is saying. I, it's locked yeah. up right now, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, but um, the the thing that I find so um, so amazing and interesting is how um, you really can make a small like small step, like you said, and even just reading what those ingredients are in the food you buy. Yes. Like just turning right. the label over, right? Like these little yeah. things and 
Um, it's so simple. And I, oh, I was in the grocery store the other day and tell me if that's right. But I talked to the guy said, because every, I find myself the foods I buy the either in the very top on the very bottom of the display on the shelves. And he's like, Oh no, the people that are right at your eye level, they pay more money. You're exactly right. Yep. That's exactly. crazy. Isn't that crazy? And that's where I'm like, it is, it's kind of this cyclical effect. And it's so scary because 73% of the food in the grocery store now is ultra processed, which means it has no nutrients. It has no real color. It has no real life. Yes. And so, and it's not, that's why I'm like, it's not anyone's fault. Maybe little by little switch some things out because when you go to the grocery store, how are we supposed to know that people go in and like, Oh, these chips are on sale. Oh, these bars have protein. Oh, this, oh, right. So that's where I, my heart and my, my, I have so much compassion for someone that is just wanting to feel better and healthy because it's not like it's information that's out there. One of the tips I've heard is always shop around the perimeter of the grocery store because that's where all the fresh food is. Yes. Right. A good tip, yes. but you're, you're right. They yes. pay high, high dollars to be right at eye level. Oh. So it's well, just another tactic, right. To try to pull light out of our bodies because again, our, our bodies are connected to our spirits. It's I think one of the most unique and amazing things about the restored gospel of Jesus Christ is that we believe that the soul is the spirit and the body, right? And that they yes. are, we take care of them and the light we attain in this life is the light we will carry with us. And I love the idea that the word of wisdom, like, don't you love that it's called the word of wisdom and it's for our health? It's not called the word of, the word of health because a lot of health foods don't really provide wisdom. And what, who's to say what health is with all the different opinions? Like, we just want to go to the source of truth and wholeness, right? That's what I love about just relating nutrition and gospel principles because they are so tied. Like when you try to understand like, oh, well, they say that, you know, coffee is really good for me or whatever. And there's certain things that will, any study will show you what you want. And if you have certain exceptions or whatever, there's always going to be a worldly view of what health looks like. But when you come down to the whole purity of truth, there is an irrefutable evidence that the things that God already has for us here make our bodies stronger, right? And I just, I think it's so simple and it's like nutrition 101. I'm sure everybody knows eat more fruits and vegetables, but like, what does that really look like? Like, do I have like, you know, and it's just kind of the mindfulness. Like it doesn't have to change overnight. It's that little step-by-step. -step. Maybe the first step is just being aware. I'm going to drink more water to this morning, have my lemon. Now I'm just going to look at and pay more attention. Am I grabbing foods out of a box or am I grabbing foods like out of the, that might come from the earth? And that's also little by little how to get more and more light, you know, into and And to kind of let go of, I mean, I, I think I just looked down and I saw this picture. I know you're holding up the yes. other one too. Yes, um, this one is fabulous, Eva. I mean, <laughs> that one, like, don't you want to be that woman and just like, let it all go. And I think sometimes we're burdened down by different myths in nutrition and different ways to take care of your, of your body or to live your truth, right? Like even just some conflicts within gospel doctrine that people might have, like the truth will set you free. Like I, I what remind me the title of this painting again, song of freedom. Oh, see, but see that, that's my title. You can have your title, so you can call it whatever you want. But it is so beautiful, and I love that it's you know the bird and the freedom, and the, and you can just I feel like there's no limit, and I love the extra added light around that too. That's illuminating off her face, and sometimes we don't realize that what's weighing us down might just be something that we're putting inside our body or something we're exposing ourselves to, right? That needs to be cleaned out that needs to just be refreshed the same way Christ cleansed the temple first before healing could happen. That might be where we're at in our lives and what we need to do next. But that painting captures it so beautifully as well. Yes. Oh, I love, I love what you said. It's so, um, it's so true that we have this ability to be freed. And I, I just love the whole concept of freedom. And I feel like the gospel is freedom to me. me too. Like when the missionaries brought Jesus to my heart, oh my gosh, I was like only 15 and I'm like, what do I do? What kind of old fashioned, you know, um, as my parents taught me truth and, and principles, but not like to the extent what I knew and learned from the gospel and I'm continually yeah. learning, you know, but it really makes us free. It's just the most amazing. I'm going to read. Okay. I'm going to read this poem because my husband, actually wrote a poem that goes uh, with 
it goes with this piece. Oh, so I'm gonna try to read it. Let's see. What I'll do is I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna try to read this poem because it goes so much with what we have been talking about. So let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go to do. Let's do this. Okay, so it's called Freedom Song, and it says there. There's, I should have had him come and read it. <laughs> oh, next time. I'm going to try. You do want to hear him because what a talented couple you two are. I can't even stand oh. it. Like, really? Gosh, that's amazing. I just, okay. <laughs> reading poetry is not easy for me, so bear with me, you guys. <laughs> I, like, don't understand half of the words most of the time. So, <laughs> I'm like, what did you mean oh, by that? I was like, <laughs> okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. That actually works great. Yeah. Okay. There's power and great purpose in freedom's sacred gift to expand our minds, our missions find, to inspire and uplift. There's dreams worth holding onto, a deeper kind of call to teach, to feed, to heal or lead and seize life with our all. Their stories still need writing and families fortified for what we sing in offering is ever multiplied. There's light that's freely given, sparks of divinity. And as it shines, this light of thine, the world is made more free. Wow. Oh. <gasps> Fed, <laughs> fortified, freedom. They all go together. That is so beautiful. Oh my God. Wow. I will put that to in a story yeah. if anyone wants to like really read it. Yes. Like... Or get the book too, because the book's incredible. But wow, that is, what an incredible, incredible way with words he has. But I did, those were the words that kind of stood out to me. Fed, right, fortified, and then kind of, I mean, there was lots of beautiful words, but I just, those were some of the ones that popped out that do go exactly with this same concept and idea that we're talking about. Yes. What a perfect poem. Yeah, I did. it's just so, so, um, so much what the Savior does to us. Yeah. Like, if we come to him, and I mean, think of how many times people were coming to him in the temple, how much of his life he actually spent there, and yeah. how many of the stories that we know about um, this is called for to hear him. I and love I love the idea that we go to the temple. Um, that temple, you know, Josiah restored the temple. He renewed it. Jesus taught at the temple. We have his temple on the earth to walk through those doors into his house. And yeah. it's just so incredible that we can feel more light. And I love how our prophet just recently spoke to the women of the church oh. too. And he talked and and Camille yeah. Johnson, yes, that we have that temple. ability, yeah, temple, and and the power that comes from heaven for all of us, like that is the most remarkable concept that I feel like if we actually lived in that full awareness and really understood that incredible gift, it it we would we would probably shudder at like the way we're we're executing like some of it. I, I am at least that's what I'm saying. I'm like, Oh my goodness, have I actually really ever lived up to that full potential? Or how can I be more aware of that? Because those were incredible, incredible thoughts and devotionals from that. Oh. Yes. Yes. And I, I love that. Like he, he, you know, the power of the Holy Ghost that our prophet said, you know, stay close to him, he yeah. will guide you or you can't survive in this crazy world we live in without that influence. Because like you mentioned earlier, you know, everyone seems to have their own truth out there. They're yeah. made up own truth that they think it fits them quite well, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's just so powerful that Jesus is the truth yeah. and the way and the life and seeking that light from him is the greatest source of truth and the temple. Oh my gosh. Like what a beautiful place to go actually physically into his house and our homes and our bodies these are all his temples it's, it's just so amazing you're exactly right i thank you for saying that because i think that does kind of bring it into full circle like we can't live into the temple we can't bring our refrigerators into the celestial <laughs> room right but our homes then become an extension of the temple day to day and then how we care for our body is an extension of the temple as well because they are the holiest vessels that we are in charge of it's 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 like how we'll continue to grow closer to him so i love that yeah thank you for 
bringing that all together. It's so awesome. But it, it's like, it affects, like, it's so amazing, like, wanting to be better in those yeah. areas, you know, wanting, yes. asking him to help us. Like, we were just traveling, and sometimes when we are traveling, you can't, you don't have your homemade food. No. You don't have, <laughs> you, you just eat, you know, sometimes. I mean, you can still, luckily, yeah. you can still pick good things, but not quite not like you do at home, you know. Oh, yeah. I loved your post when you put the salad and <laughs> like <laughs> that was too cute oh, when you were traveling so there there are ways but then like we had we went to this one Irish place and um my daughter ordered some stuff that wasn't that and I'm like she's like mom I shouldn't have eaten any of that I just don't feel good now you know and she connected the two is it amazing I, how you can feel that like the spirit works the same way yes. our physical body works the same way it's a yes. familiar kind of thing like I kind of knew I did it anyways. We made a mistake, but it's okay. Yes. Like, it's never like even Elder Uthorf says, we will stray off the path. Like we will mm -hmm. do it. So the point's not, oh, be perfect and don't do it. It's just, it's all right. We know what to do. We'll start again. We'll just set daily restoration goals, right? Go back to the temple, go back to reminding yes. us where to put us back on track. And that's really what it's about. And that's, I think, how we get the closest to the Savior too, is through those little mistakes. That's yes. how you get a healthier body. Bad days, I always tell my clients, a bad day is just good data. Run with it. What I did you learn? That. You know? Oh my gosh, I love that. Wow, that's so good. Like, that's such a good quote. Because oh. uh, it's very hopeful. Yeah. Instead of, like, beating yourself down. Because Satan's waiting exactly for that. He's waiting for us to feel down. Yep. To not do the very next good thing, like Frozen teaches us. Yep. You know, that song. <laughs> but, like, it's, like, the next best thing. What are you going to yep. do? What is the very next, you know, just yeah. keep him in focus like keep centering your life on him because that's that's what's gonna pull us out of that pit that maybe we're filling or have fallen yeah. into it's just so so amazing that we have jesus and that light that we can so lucky. i know what a gift and how beautiful to be able to talk and share and so we do we can't wait to hear everyone's comments yes because it would be so fun to learn what other people are, you know, hearing and how, I, you know, I have they, no idea what happened. This has never happened to me before, but there's some note I have to, I'm going to research this because this is so, okay. I can't well, don't talk about it. It's so, it's just so fun to sit and chat and yes, I love I loved my mornings with you. So thank you so and much. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much and have a beautiful day. And remember, drink your water, you guys, with yeah. lemon. And if and anyone ever has questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Like I... I'm a very bad at Instagram. I don't know how to do professional videos, you guys. It's just me and that's it. But Thanks. we want to do the best. So I'm like, just send me a DM or questions. I would do anything to help anyone if anyone needs anything. So anyways. Yes. And now we'll put your info. I'll put your info right on the oh. story. So we'll have that. And if you send me anything you think people might want to yeah. um, could read fun. and learn. Okay. Awesome. You guys will be back same yep. place next time. And holy next week. week. Holy cow. <laughs> I know. It's so good. I can't wait. I love you, sir. I can't wait either. Well, thank you. Love you. Okay. Thank love you. you. Bye. See Bye, everyone. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.